Hello, I'm Kate Bradbury and for this Get Dorset Buzzing film I'm going to talk about the diversity of pollinators and the diversity of plants we should grow for them. Now many people when they think of pollinators they think of bees and bees are fantastic pollinators but other pollinators in the UK include butterflies, hoverflies and some species of wasp and beetle and all of these pollinators have slightly different, they've carved themselves out a slightly different niche in the ecosystem. So some of them come out in March and they sort of finished flying by sort of June or July. Some of them, the ivy bee for example, doesn't even come out until September. So that's one of our latest pollinators. So the first thing to make sure is that you grow flowers in your garden from about March to November, just so you bridge the gap the entire pollinator season in your garden. And the second thing to consider is that all of these pollinators have different shaped mouth parts and that means that they visit different types of flower. It needn't be complicated. Bees and butterflies suck nectar through a proboscis, which is another word for tongue, like a straw. So if you imagine bees and butterflies, they visit flowers and they suck nectar. Hoverflies, they, their proboscis is like a sponge and they, they literally, if you watch them close up on flowers, they will just dab the flowers like that and they absorb the nectar and particles of pollen from this sponge-like dabbing that they do on the flowers. So when you plant flowers, when you're choosing flowers in your garden, it's really important to think about these tongue lengths and think about mouth parts and choose flowers that have as equal diversity as the pollinators themselves. So, if we start over here, we've got this rose here. It's a very open rose. You've got all the parts here. You've got the nectar and the pollen all here on this rose. So um, a bee with a short tongue and a medium length tongue and a hoverfly, they can, all, they can all get that. There's loads of access for lots of different types of pollinators. But some of the pollinators with longer tongues, they wouldn't really be able to get that. That, that wouldn't really be very useful to them at all. Now we've got um, Japanese anemones here, which have very similar sort of shaped um, flower parts to the rose, with all of the pollen and nectar sort of exposed here. It's very pollen pollen friendly plants here. And then we've got the um, the anthemas here, the, the marguerites, and this is in the daisy family. And plants in the daisy family are particularly good for short tongued bees and for hoverflies because the flower itself is used as a landing pad. So the bee or the hoverfly or, or the butterfly will come along and land and then each of these, this looks to you like one flower, but it's actually comprised of sort of over a hundred little tiny florets and each floret has got um, some nectar in the bottom and some pollen just sort of hovering around the top. And the idea is that the pollinator brushes against the pollen as it reaches in to get the nectar and then when it visits the next flower it deposits some of that pollen on the flower and that's how you fertilise a flower. Again, we've got another family here um, in the daisy family. This is Aster and Michaelmas daisy. And then we've got bowl-shaped flowers here, which is slightly different. So the nectar is can, sort of hidden away there in the, in the centre of the flower, and the bee just brushes past the nectar here. And then for longer-tongued bees, this catmint here has got quite a long flower tube. And so the bee has to land and needs quite a long tongue and you can see here the bee needs quite a long tongue just to get into the flower just to get the nectar. So when you're in the garden center choosing plants for bees, one if you haven't got a list of bee friendly plants to go on at your disposal in the garden center just head for the plants where the bees are because they will tell you which plants are bee friendly. But secondly, just have a look in your trolley before you go to the checkout. Have you got plants in the daisy family? Have you got plants with long flower tubes? Have you got open bowl shaped flowers? And the greater diversity of flowers you grow in your garden, the greater diversity of pollinators that will come in.